Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed we do. Um, you might have heard Glenn Greenwald made a little bit of news yesterday. He's going to join us this morning to break down all the ins and outs of that. We've got David Sirota on to talk about potential health care futures under either Biden or Trump. We also have the panel in the House to do a lot of election speculation and debate and all that good stuff. Uh, and we do want to start with the election and what may come to pass next week. Yeah, that's right. So Vice President Biden and President Trump both spending yesterday in Florida. Florida is basically the ballgame for election night. And the reason why that is, is because they're one of the few states which will count some of their mail-in ballots before Election Day. And we will likely have results there. If Biden wins Florida, it's basically game over for Trump. There's right. almost no scenario to 270, which we'll get into a little bit later, for him if that doesn't happen. Biden essentially said that out loud yesterday, and Trump was attacking him. Let's take a listen to both of them. Ladies and gentlemen, the heart and soul of this country is at stake right here in Florida. It's up to you. You hold the key. If Florida goes blue, it's over. And if I don't sound like a typical Washington politician, it's because I'm not a politician. And I don't always play by the rules of Washington and the Washington establishment. And the dynamic saga that you laid out is exactly why Michael Bloomberg spent so much money in the state of Florida also, because they're thinking not just about, like, how do we win, but how do we make it clear that we won on election night? And for Democrats, Florida is the most certain way to do that. They can win, however, without Florida. Mm -hmm. So kind of the nightmare scenario in terms of, like, uncertainty and angst and, like, national potential strife is if Florida's close and Trump looks like he's winning it, those industrial Midwestern states, they are uh, opposite of Florida in that they can't count the mail-in ballots ahead of Election Day. That is the way that their re regulations right. and laws are written in the state. So very possible that in those industrial Midwestern states, because you are likely to have a very strong um, Election Day vote for Trump, that you could see it looking like Trump is winning in those states on election night because they haven't counted the mail-in ballots. So that's why a lot of people are looking to Florida as like, OK, if Florida goes for Biden, then we pretty much know how this is going. If Florida is close, if Florida, if Florida goes a little you know, to Trump by a certain margin, then we have no idea what way this no, is going. No, exactly. And this is why the maps and all of that for 270 matter a lot. And we encourage everybody to really pay attention to Florida, Pennsylvania. Of course, those are like the big bellwether. So it's yeah. interesting. Steve Cornell over at MSNBC put together a series of maps which I think are really useful for the different scenarios that could play out. So let's throw up the first one there on the screen. And this is one that we've talked about a lot, which is that it's possible the polls are wrong and that they're wrong in a direction where they're undercounting Joe Biden's support to the maximum level. Basically, they're dramatically wrong and that Biden's going to win in a landslide. They wouldn't actually have to be dramatically wrong right. for for Biden to have a landslide. Um, he's tied in Texas. I mean, this is basically he wins all of the toss up states, mm -hmm. plus the ones that he's already ahead of. This isn't him cutting into any like lean R states or anything like this. This is like he wins the Democratic states that are already sort of expected to go in his column, plus he wins all the swing states. That's how you end up with this number. Yeah, I think this is like an overperformance by three or four, which, I mean, you know, depends on how you define that. So then right. the next one, let's put that up there. This is another important one, which is shows that Joe Biden obviously would be ahead, but it's going to be 2008, an Obama-level victory, where you still win still large Florida. Victory. You could still see it's quite a large victory there for Joe Biden, 335 electoral votes. Yeah, so this one is like, okay, he wins all of the, he wins all of his column, right. and the swing states that are like right on the edge, like Florida, he wins, but he doesn't win some of those stretch states like Texas, for example, or exactly. Georgia. So the next one, I think, is, you know, these were when we're starting to get into the much more likely scenarios, which is that there are Trump voters that, you know, get him over the edge, but Democrats are counting, and they're looking that they can see in the metro areas, and that Trump did hold on to some rural white support. I think this one is particularly interesting because you can see there that Biden is still winning there with 290 electoral votes, which I think is pretty, you know, pretty significant because we're running through all of these different scenarios in which Biden is winning. He just has so much more room to play with. 
If I had to bet, I think this is somewhere around where the electoral map is going to look I think like. So too. And you can see that Florida there is where you know, Trump wins Florida, but then some of the blue wall does come in to that column. Arizona does go for Biden. That would give him 290 electoral so votes. So that map is basically the map if Biden just holds the states that are lean D, That's classified right. as lean D, um, and Trump picks up all the swing states, mm -hmm. which underscores the challenge that Trump has. He has to not just win every single swing state, Florida and Georgia and Arizona. He also has to get into a couple of those lean Democratic states. I think the places that they're looking at in particular are Pennsylvania, certainly is one of them, um, potentially Nevada. So that's what makes his path so much more challenging is Biden, if things go the way that they look in the polls right now, Biden is going to end up with more than 270 electoral college votes. You'd have to have a polling miss and Trump outperforming, not only winning all those swing states, but also picking up a few from what looks to be the Biden column right now. Yeah, and the next one that Steve lays out is a really crazy one. So this is a flood of same-day Trump voters where he does win Pennsylvania, but Democrats end up winning that Nebraska too, <laughs> where that, that congressional district where they would have 270 oh electoral God. votes and Trump 268. This also though is predicated on Biden winning Arizona and Trump winning Pennsylvania. Actually, quite a likely scenario if it was going to go that way, because Pennsylvania, of course, you know, has more of that rural white support that Arizona just absolutely doesn't have. So then the next one is when we started to get into the Trump victory scenarios, which is where Nevada, despite, you know, I think it's what, polling in Biden, I think it's plus Biden six, plus roughly. six, something like that, would actually go to Trump. This is that scenario. I mean, you talked about this yesterday. If yeah. there was ever a state which was primed for an anti-lockdown message for a reopen the economy one, then it was probably Nevada, just given how their economy has been completely decimated and they need tourism to come back. So that's a scenario where Nevada could put Trump over the edge. It would also require that polling miss in Pennsylvania. Yeah, Nevada... Um to me is one to keep an eye on. If there was one state that was going to buck a lot of the national trend towards Biden, I think Nevada is one that is prime for that, both because of the dynamic that you mentioned, but also it's a very blue call. It's a very working class state, um, you know, dominated by yeah. the service industry. Democrats what they've done in Nevada is they've actually built like a political machine. Mm -hmm. And so that's why even in times when um, Democrats have underperformed in other states, they've overperformed in Nevada because of that union machine strength. Well, the workforce and the unions have really been hit hard. So that's why I kind of look again. I think Joe Biden is going to win Nevada, but it's a state that I have my eye on. And everybody should be following, of course, John Ralston yes. on Twitter for his analysis. He does an analysis of all the day of votes, and, and he sees it still as very close. So I think that should be a warning sign I for all of us. I think we have the final one there. Let's put that up there on the screen. The final kind of swing states, everything was wrong scenario. This is it right here. 322 to Biden, 216. So there you go. Those are the various scenarios. I think it's troubling for Trump that there are only really, you know, two, there's only two there in which he wins more than 270 electoral votes. There could be other permutations. I think the real thing to, it's just so crazy because we're living now in a country where Florida is, I, I still think Florida is probably going to go Trump. And that you, but you might have Georgia go for Biden. And so the offsetting of Georgia, Georgia and Arizona going in the Biden column is just something that we didn't really anticipate in previous 2020 analyses. Same thing. I mean, how much Biden has support in the upper Midwest currently. We were just looking at the COVID map. We'll cover this later in the show. Wisconsin is getting hammered. It's got the worst outbreak in the entire country, along with Ohio. I mean, flashes of red in Ohio, which right now is like a Trump plus one state and all of that. And I saw some discussion online that the closeness of Ohio actually indicates that the polls are generally correct across the upper Midwest. Because the last time around, Trump won Ohio handily. So you can see that similar populations and the drops in demographics would probably replicate across the country. Yeah, I was looking um, this morning at some of the district level data in Pennsylvania, 
Um, there was, it was funny, a Republican member of Congress was like bragging about, well, I don't think Tra Trump has any problems because he's up by 10 points in my district. Well, that's a district that he won by 20 points yes, last time. Right. So that <laughs> yeah. was not really like right. a great in indicator right. based on your own internal polling. And there's other polling like that around the region. We also were looking yesterday at um, the generic congressional ballot where they just asked people, not a specific name, but just like, who do you prefer, Democrat or Republican, to control Congress? Last time around 2016, you can see as you get closer to Election Day, those lines basically converge. Democrats had an edge over Republicans, and as you get closer and closer to Election Day, they basically converge. This time, no sign of that. Yeah. If anything, they are widening so that Democrats have a larger advantage on the um, generic ballot, which, again, is just an indicator. Look, things can happen. We don't know what, you know, we don't know what we don't know. But... If you're using the, the warning signs from last time in 2016 that people should have paid attention to, none of those are here. And let me also say, I mean, Trump has mishandled coronavirus as part of the reason why it's spiking. Obviously, the fact that it's spiking right coming into Election Day is a disaster for him. And frankly, one of the dynamics that I was thinking about as I was watching their competing rallies yesterday is um, Biden has gotten tremendously lucky that if, if there wasn't COVID, and you actually had the visuals of Trump rallies versus Biden rallies, then that narrative that we heard in the beginning about like the difference in enthusiasm, I think that would be more salient. I think it would I think it would have shaped the coverage more, and I think it would have been an issue for him ultimately. And so the fact that we've had COVID and he's been able to use that as an excuse to have these drive-in rallies that, you know, intentionally look a lot different. And look, I know that they are taking the public health series. I'm not slamming them for that. But it's also been very fortunate for them that they could get away with running this kind of campaign where he can be very low-key. Yes. Um, you know, he has his busiest day yet of like, wow, he's going to do three different things, you know. <laughs> That's been an incredible stroke of good luck for him um, because that hasn't put some of the more the less impressive dynamics of their campaign on display for the public. You're completely right. Look, without COVID, we're living in a totally different world. I mean, the economy is different. Like, remember, Republican ident party identification was at its highest level ever in the last, like, eight years. Yeah. In January of 2020, right in the middle of the impeachment scandal. I just, it, it couldn't be a more different race without COVID. But that is the, that is where the world that we're living in. And it just unambiguously is benefiting Joe Biden and his campaign just in the posture that they're taking towards it. And I think it's going to benefit him a lot on Election Day. So if you, I'm looking at 270 yeah. to win just to do one more map conversation as we're thinking concretely about this heading into, it is kind of fun for nerds like us. Yeah. So if you take all of the states that are um, where the candidates have more than a five point edge, and you classify those as, you know, D or R. And then everything in the middle where there's a five point or less potential swing, and you classify those as swing states. So that means Iowa, Ohio, North Carolina. So this is a very conservative estimate where you're basically saying, like, look, these states that are within five points, they could go either way. If you classify them that way, Biden is still at 279, even without winning any of the swing states where he, you know, where you, you're within a five point margin. Right. So, um, so that's the landscape that Trump faces going into election day. Look, we've said it here and we'll say it again. If there was any election where polling would be wildly off, it would be this one. And not because the pollsters are like evil or whatever, but because none of us has ever faced a landscape like this. We're seeing turnout levels in these places. That is insane. Yeah. And so I understand too, if you are like a Pennsylvania Trump voter, and you see this surge of turnout of all the people in your life and your community, people have never voted for, and they're all surging to go vote for Trump. I can see why you look at that and you're like, of course this guy's going to win. Yeah. Like, I see even more support from him than before. That may be true, but that is being matched in the numbers and exceeded in some places by also overwhelming Democratic support. And so I think that's part of why. You have so much of the country that's like so certain that Trump is going to win again because they're like, look, not only am I in this time, but everybody in my family is actually going to vote this time. It's just these levels of turnout and enthusiasm are nothing we've experienced in recent years. I think you're exactly right. And I think that many Democrats feel the same way. I mean, we live in, in a very blue act. I think Democrats are terrified, area. actually, to well, be honest with you. <laughs> but the thing is, what I see is that 
all of around here, suburban areas and others of the Democrats and other you know, upper middle class people that I know, they're all doing the same thing, right? So like, they're also all voting. Many of them didn't vote in 2016. Yeah. And so they feel in a similar sense, they're like, look, everybody around me is voting. So just remember, this is a you know, game of aggregates. It's also a game of states. And so when we see which populations are activated, you should consider that you know, just as activated as you are, there are many other the groups doing this. Ideological thing. opposite yeah. is also active. We have uh, one more poll we can throw up here. We didn't put up the Quinnipiac right, polls Quinnipiac. yet, did we? Um, these are new polls from yesterday. Uh, they're, you know, they're pretty good for Biden. Frankly, Biden plus three in Florida. They're they're fairly in line. The one that's an outlier here is Biden plus five in Ohio, uh, which mm-hmm. you know isn't crazy to think if that. COVID surge that they're having there is really impacting votes at the last minute. We also covered here yesterday what I thought was really interesting and significant, this Vox story about Ohio union voters. In Lordstown. And how many of them brought up the Lordstown plant, GM plant, and that Trump went to that area and said, don't sell your houses. It's all coming back. And then the jobs went overseas. So Look, I don't know. I think it's still, uh, it still would be uh, an upset if Biden were to win Ohio. But it is interesting that that poll, given that the other polls in their set were relatively close to where the averages had been. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I was looking at some analysis on that. It's actually a Quinnipiac Biden plus five is generally consistent with what a Trump plus one win in Ohio would look like. As in, you know, it'd be a slight miss, but generally like within that same realm, that's bad for Trump. He won the state by like nine points last time around. Yeah, it really shouldn't, shouldn't be, be in play. Shouldn't even be in play. It should be like, you know, Trump plus three or something like that. And he could win by nine. But that's not actually where it is. And I think that is a big problem for him. Last note on that. Um, we mentioned Florida is a state that will likely know the results of on election night if all goes smoothly. Ohio is actually one of those states as yes. well. Um, right. Different from the other, you know, Michigan and Wisconsin, Wisconsin and Michigan, for sure you are unlikely to know the full mail-in ballot count on election night. But Ohio actually does count them in advance. So that's another sign. Look, if Trump loses Ohio... Game over, for sure. If it goes blue, it's just, it's done. Back it up. All All right, we're going to have more rising for you after this.